Hello and welcome to part two of revising for the specialist exam. Now I've travelled all around Australia, I've read all of their past papers and today I'm going to show you some questions that wouldn't look out of place on a Queensland specialist external paper. Let's get started. Alright, give yourself 90 seconds, uh, go. And I'm going to solve it in three, two, one, let's do it. So for these particles to collide, at some time they have to have the same I and J components. So we're equating I and J components here. So here we have a J component. So we can say 3T plus 2 equals 4 plus T. And then we can solve that. So T equals 1. At time 1, that's when these particles are going to have the same J component. Now, considering they do collide, we're told that they collide, that means that at that time they're also going to have the same I component. Now, I chose deliberately to equate the J components because if I'd equated the I components, you can see I would have ended up with a quadratic there. No one wants that. Okay, now that I know that they're colliding at time 1, I can sub time 1 into these two equations. Uh, so 6 times 1, 6 times 1, I plus 4 plus 1, J, the answer is 6 plus 5, 6 I plus 5 J, B. And so you might be asking yourself, this is a little bit easy. Why on earth are we, are we doing this here? What are you showing me? I wanted to show you how to do this on your calculator. All right, so I'm in the graphing mode of my calculator, so menu, and then I'm going to add a graph. I'm going to add a parametric equation. And I'm going to put in the I component and the J component here. So 2 plus 4 T squared for that one, and then 3. 3t plus 2, and then you'll see I get that graph there. Put in the other one. So again, menu, I'm going to graph, I'm going to graph another parametric equation. Uh, 6t and 4 plus t, bam. And you can see we have a thing where, it's, where they're meeting, right? Right there. Uh, now there's a few different ways to analyze this. Um, you can sort of do a trace uh, if we do a graph trace here, and you can see it it doesn't really like these parametric equations. Someone in the comments can tell me how to make it work a little bit better. But you can see I'm following this blue one along, and I've got the point 6 plus, oh, 6, 5, which corresponds to our answer of B, 6i plus 5j. There is another really neat way that you can view this, uh, and I really like, uh, let's go into trace again. And let's do like a, a path plot, uh, a parametric path plot. Okay, and we can see them moving along, moving along, and then meeting there, and then moving past each other. So I'm showing you this question not because I think this question is super hard. It's not. I'm showing you this question because I think having the ability to do those sorts of things on your calculator is really important. On to question two. We're in Victoria in 2016. Uh, have a crack at it. Give you 90 seconds. All right, I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. Let's do it. Okay, so looking at this, a random sample of 100. There's our n right there. We've got a mean of 210, and we've got a standard deviation of 16 grams right there. And we're going to find a 95% confidence interval. We should be able to do all of this on our calculator. All right, so we're going into menu, statistics here, confidence intervals, and unlike uh, methods where you would have been going into something like this, we're going straight into this Z interval here. And data input method, we're putting stats in here. All right, so we should know our standard deviation. I believe that was 16. Our mean was 210. Our sample size was 100. And our C level confidence interval was 0.95. All right, and we should have an answer right there. So we have a lower of 206.9 and an upper of 213.1. So our answer here is B as well. Now you can do this with the formula. I'm not going to show you how to do that with the formula because this is something that you really should be able to do on your calculator. All right, Tech Active, short response. We're in Western Australia, 2019. Uh, give yourself uh, about 10 minutes on this one. Go ahead. All right, and I'm going to start solving it in three, two, one. Let's do it. All right, determine the starting position of the particle and mark this as point A on the diagram. So the starting position is when time equals zero. So let's put zero in for time. So negative two cos zero, that's going to be negative two times one, uh, which is negative two. 
and we've got 1 minus sine 0, sine 0 is 0, so 1. Uh, so negative 2, 1. Let's mark that on our diagram, negative 2, 1. Now, of course, similar to the previous question, we can do all that on our calculator. Graphing mode, we go menu, graph, and we graph a parametric equation. And we put in our x's and y's here. So I've typed them in, and you can see we've got this thing here. You can see it's not as big as my graph here, but that's because I um, didn't make the time big enough. 0 to 6.28, it's probably something closer to 12.56. Uh, Okay, and you can see we get a picture just like that picture there. Now, if we trace that, if we analyze, oh, sorry, if we trace that graph and we do like a uh, path plot for the parametric equation, you can see that we get a nice little picture here. I'm just arrowing across. Okay, and that's our path plot. So we can see two things here. We can see where it starts, but we can also see the direction that it's heading in st straight down. All right, so next up we want to determine the initial velocity. So we're going to have to find the derivative of our displacement here. So r dot t. So the derivative of negative 2 cos t on 2 is going to be sine t on 2. And the derivative of 1 minus sine t, derivative of sine is cos so negative cos t. All right, so there's our velocity function there. We can sub t in for 0. So negative sine 0 on 2 and negative cos 0. And that should give us our initial velocity. So it's an interesting one here. So our initial velocity, we've got an initial velocity in the x direction, sorry, in the x direction and in the y direction. So the initial direction here, negative sine of 0 is 0 and negative cos of 0. Cos of 0 is 1, so negative 1. Our initial velocity is 0 in the x direction or in the um, y direction and uh, negative 1 in the j direction. So, uh, illustrate this on the diagram above. We've got an initial velocity vector that looks like that. Now, why are we doing this on a graphics calculator or a tech active paper? We can do this on our graphics calculator. So I'm in my graphing mode here and we're going to enter a new graph parametric equation. And this time we're going to add the derivatives of the functions that we had. So uh, here we have this one here. And it's the derivative with respect to t. So the derivative with respect to the x uh, value and the y value there. Let's graph it. Okay, and we get this thing here. I might just take another look at what I've done. From 6.28, let's go the 12.56 uh, again. That's 4 pi, by the way. Okay, you can see that it looks quite interesting there. Let's do a uh, trace uh, path plot here, parametric. Okay, and you can see we're at time zero right now, and you can see our um, point is zero, negative one. That's actually our velocity at time zero. Zero in the x direction and negative one straight down, which is what we found earlier. And as I trace through here, this is telling us our velocity in both the x direction or in the y direction and the j direction. You can see, and this is what we get from that. It's quite interesting. You might want to puzzle that out and really think about what's happening here, how your velocity is changing over time. It's, it's pretty cool. But here we go. All right, so that's the last question. Uh, next part, part C. Now, while this is on our tech active paper, we're not going to use our calculator here. This is straight up uh, converting to a Cartesian equation using... Um, trigonometric identities. So here's our function. So we can write this as x equals negative 2 cos t on 2 and we can write it as y equals 1 minus sine t. Alright, we can rearrange that a little bit. I just want it in terms of sine t. So we can say that sine t is equal to 1 minus y and on this side here we can say that x over 2 or minus x over 2 is equal to cos 
t over 2. Now, we've got a little bit of a problem here, right? I'm close because I've got a sine t and a cos t on 2. And I could, if um, t on 2 and t, if those were the same, if this was t and t, or t on 2 and t on 2, I could use the Pythagorean identity. Uh, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. But because they're not the same, I really want to make them the same. And I can make them the same, but it's going to take uh, one of my trig identities to do it. So specifically, we're going to use this thing right here. So cos 2a, if I take cos t on 2, we can write that as cos 2 times t on 2. Right, But when I do that, cos 2a, we know that's going to be equal to 2 cos squared a. Now our a value here is t on 2 minus 1. So this has the effect of taking this bit here, cos 2 times t on 2, and making it that nice neat cos t that we wanted. And this bit here, we can write it as 2 cos squared t on 2 minus 1. Now, from earlier, we know that cos t on 2 is equal to negative x on 2. So, need to be a bit careful here with our square root, squares and brackets and things. 2 times that thing there, negative x on 2, squared, because we want to square cos t on 2, and that's now cos t on 2. So, squaring that, and then minus 1. All right, so we get 2 times x squared, so x squared on the top, and then 2 squared, so 4 on the bottom, but we're multiplying it by 2, so we're going to end up with um, x squared on 2. All right, so I've just simplified that, got x squared on 2 there, minus 1. So now we know that cos t equals x squared on 2 minus 1. This is fantastic news because I know that cos t equals this, and I know that sine t equals this, and... I know that cos squared t plus sine squared t equals 1, which means that cos squared t is x squared over 2 minus 1, and we're going to square that, plus sine squared t, sine t is 1 minus y, so 1 minus y, and we're going to square that, and that's equal to 1. I'm pretty happy with that. x squared on 2 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus y squared equals 1. So a pretty tricky one to convert to Cartesian form. And you might be wondering, like, how do I know if I've gotten that correct or not? You can go into your graphing calculator and graph it. But this time not as a parametric equation, but as a relation. So the way that I've graphed that is just by going into my menu, graph, relation, and I've typed in the equation exactly as I see it. And you can see the image looks the same as when I graphed it as a parametric equation, except now it doesn't have a t variable in it, but you get the same picture, which is what you'd expect when you sketch a Cartesian equation or when you create a Cartesian equation from a parametric equation. So time for the last question. So a little bit of a theme going on here. Uh, Vector is again uh, seven marks, so about 10 minutes here. Um, have a try. All right, I'm going to do it in three, two, one. Let's do it. All right, so after two minutes of flight, how high is the drone above the ground? So this portion of our equations are going to tell us the height of this off the ground. So we're just subbing in two or 120. Hmm, check your, check your things here. Time in seconds. All right, so be careful here. After two minutes, but our equation is time in seconds. So we're going to sub 120 into this. Okay, so we're 47.6 metres off the ground at that time. We don't really care about this part and this part. That's all we care about. All right, so this one's an interesting one conceptually. Write the expression for the position vector of the drone from the top of the phone tower. All right, so here's our phone tower. Um, let's just call that like position P for phone. Uh, and we want to find the position vector from phone to wherever the drone happens to be at a specific time. Okay, how could we find this vector here? Well, one way we could do it is to find a vector 
from here to the operator at O, because that's where the operator is. Find a vector from the operator to the drone. Uh, it's a bit of an ugly one here, but I'm drawing an arrow. Let's draw an arrow to like the drones there, right? Because the drone started there and it sort of moved along, moved along, moved along, right? Okay, so if we want to know a vector from the phone to the drone, let's just put the drone there. If we want to know the operator, the position vector from the phone to the drone, we can find it by adding this vector to that vector. Now, we already know that vector. That vector is RT. It's the vector equation that gives the position of the drone at any time. We can find this vector here, PO. PO is just going to be the negative of this because this vector here is actually OP, the height of the phone tower in relation to the operator, or the position of the top of the phone tower. So that's going to be negative 200, negative 150, and negative 30. That means now that vector P drone is going to be equal to um, that one plus that one. So it's going to be equal to negative 200, negative 150, negative 30 plus RT, plus all of that. All right, so doing that's trivial. Something that looks like that, the negative's there. Okay, so um, this is the vector equation PD, the, the vector between the top of the phone tower and the drone at any given time. So we can move on to part C now. All right, so we want to know how close does this thing get to the mobile phone tower? Because if it gets closer than 50 metres, there's a problem. So we want to know the distance of this at any given time. This equation will tell us the distance at any given time. The square root of this squared plus this squared plus this squared. Alright, so we can graph this now. Alright, so I've graphed it now. Now, don't get confused here. Just because there's t's in here doesn't mean we're in some sort of parametric equation land or something. We just want to know when does this drop below 50 if it does drop below 50. So graphing it with those t's as x's in your regular graphing a function thing gives you something that looks like this. And then if we just add another graph in here, um, function y equals 50, you can see that it does indeed drop below 50. The distance drops below 50 at those points. So if we analyze our graph now, we can find those intersection points. One right there, menu, and let's find another one. Uh, analyze our graph, intersection points. Okay, and we've got one. Let's just f f make sure that we can see those points correctly. 174 and 286. I just checked my float there, I was a bit concerned. Um, 174.31, 285.71, that's a bit better. So the question was, determine whether the drone will cause interference. Yes, it will. And if so, for how long? 285.71 minus 175.31. Okay, and to the nearest second, that's 111 seconds. All right, quite a bit going on there. Do I really think this will be question 12, the second question on the tech actives? Maybe, maybe not, um, but it's a fun one. All right, let's tick off these questions. Two tech actives, two tech actives, that's two down. All right, take those ideas, work with them. Make sure you're comfortable putting all that stuff into your calculator. You need to be more comfortable doing that than I am because I'm not doing the exam. You are. All right, good luck.